Iranian dissidents inside the country have launched a campaign called No to the Islamic Republic to show their outrage at the tyrants. The grassroots effort dubbed No to the Islamic Republic has emerged in recent days across Iran in the form of tracts, graffiti and other media. Iranian Crown Prince Reza Pahlavi as well as hundreds of influential artists, musicians and cultural figures have embraced its call for an abolition of mullahs. Surely the No to the Islamic Republic campaign has gone viral on social networks. The campaign has sent a clear message to the Biden administration and other Western governments to avoid dealing with the Islamic Republic. Iranians believe that it is the Islamic Republic itself that is the primary obstacle to civilizational advancement in Iran. The IRGC Navy unveiled on Monday a new missile city base hosting a broad range of cruise and ballistic missiles with various ranges. IRGC announced that it had set up a new missile city packed with cruise and ballistic missiles and electronic warfare equipment. A number of ballistic and cruise missile systems with various ranges were displayed in this event, according to state-run TV. One of the items unveiled in the event was a missile system that can shift the focus on targets after launch, said Tehran Times. The new equipment in the missile city can launch mines in various ranges, allow for 360 degree and mobile firing operations, reported IRGC Ron Tasnim. After Amir Hekmati was released from Iranian custody in a 2016 deal trumpeted as a diplomatic breakthrough, he was declared eligible for $20 million from a special United States government fund as compensation for years of imprisonment that included brutal torture. But payday never arrived, leaving Hekmati to wonder why. The answer has finally arrived. Newly filed court documents reviewed by the Associated Press revealed decade-old FBI suspicions that he traveled to Iran with the goal of selling classified secrets to the government. Hekmadi vigorously disputes the allegations, has never faced criminal charges, and is challenging a special master's conclusion that he lied about his visit to Iran and is therefore not entitled to the money. The FBI's suspicions help explain the government's ongoing refusal to pay Hekmati for his ordeal and muddy the narrative around the United States citizen. Marine and Iraq war veteran, whose release was championed at the United States government's highest levels, including by Joe Biden, then the Vice President and John Kerry, then the Secretary of State. The documents offer radically conflicting accounts of Hekmati's purpose in visiting Iran and detail the simmering behind-the-scenes dispute over whether he is entitled to access a fund that compensates victims of international terrorism. Seven rockets on Monday targeted an Iraqi airbase housing United States troops north of Baghdad. The latest in series of attacks on Al Balad did not cause any casualties or damage inside the base, the security official said. The other five rockets crashed into a nearby village, according to the official. Washington has blamed on Tehran-backed militias in the region. Previously, an American subcontractor was killed in a similar attack against another airbase. Ain al-Assad in Iraq's western desert. Rocket attacks have repeatedly targeted the United States presence in Baghdad, including the U.S. Embassy, as well as convoys ferrying material for the U.S.-led coalition. The frequency of attacks diminished late last year ahead of United States President Joe Biden's inauguration. Though now Iran is pressing America to return to Tehran's 2015 nuclear deal. The spokesperson of the Islamic judiciary in Iran on Saturday announced that the former executive deputy of the judiciary has been sentenced to jail for bribery. 
former executive deputy of judiciary system Akbar Tabari received the jail term after being convicted of setting up and heading a bribery network, according to the judiciary spokesman Ghulam Hussein Esmaili. As one of the heaviest sentences, Akbar Tabari, who served in a number of senior roles in Iran's judiciary, was sentenced to 31 years in prison for corruption. Further, Tehran's Islamic Criminal Court ordered Tabari to pay more than 430 billion riyals, which equals to $1.65 million in fines. It also ordered the seizure of illegally acquired properties, according to the news. The Islamic Supreme Court has confirmed the sentence. The former top official was also found guilty of money laundering for which he was sentenced to 12 years and ordered to pay about 600 billion riyals, which is $2.3 million, declared Ismaili. Other charges against Akbar Tabari include forgery of official documents and misuse of documents, and try to acts of influence on officials. The high-profile trial of Tabari opened in June alongside 21 other defendants. According to Ismaili, the Supreme Court did not rule on the money laundering charge because they need to be re-examined. Akbar Tabari was the Director General of Finance of the Judiciary during the presidency of Mahmoud Hashemi Shahroudi, and then he appointed as the Executive Vice President of the Judiciary under the presidency of Sadegh Larijani. Iran slips in the Corruption Perception Index in 2019 as a top spot is shared by New Zealand and Denmark. Former IRGC Quds Force Commander Qasem Soleimani had sold oil in the international market on behalf of the Islamic Republic to break United States sanctions. Vice President Ashak Jahangiri revealed. Jahangiri says Qasem Soleimani was the only man who was able to do it and repatriate some money to the Islamic Republic. The Supreme National Security Council and the Ministry of Oil set up anti-sanctions headquarters and then asked to sell 8 million barrels of oil by breaching the United States sanctions. But no one was able to sell even a barrel of oil, according to Jahangiri. The only person who was able to help us at one point was Soleimani, the vice president affirmed. Jahangiri did not mention the date or amount of oil that Qasem Soleimani had sold, but said Soleimani had been able to breach United States sanctions and move billions of dollars into the Islamic Republic through innovative and risky methods. On March 17, 2021, Financial Times reported that the Biden administration has told Beijing it will enforce Trump-era sanctions against Iranian oil as shipments from the Islamic regime to China have soared, a senior United States official said. Iranian oil exports to China have been increasing for some time now. The senior administration official familiar with the Iran issue told the Financial Times in an interview. Some observers had questioned whether the rise indicated that the Biden administration was turning a blind eye to the trade in an effort to encourage Tehran to join negotiations over a 2015 nuclear accord that the United States abandoned in 2018. The Biden administration has made returning to the deal a priority. We've told the Chinese that we will continue to enforce our sanctions, the senior administration official said. There will be no tacit green light. The official indicated that sanctions could be waived during hopes for talks between Washington and Tehran to revive the multi-party nuclear deal. On May 8, 2018, former United States President Donald Trump withdrew from the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, also known as the Iran Nuclear Deal or the Iran Deal. The Islamic Republic continues to strengthen its presence in Syria. Saudi-owned Al Arabiya on March 18th reported that the Islamic Republic still continues its destructive activities in the region, smuggles weapons to Iraq and Syria under the ghost of vegetable shipments. While Assad-controlled areas in Syria are experiencing catastrophic living conditions and extreme poverty, Trade is ongoing between the IRGC side in Syria and Tehran-affiliated militias in Iraq. The Islamic Republic, however,
continues to strengthen its presence in Syria. According to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, trucks carrying vegetables, fruits and other commercial goods go through legal and illegal crossing borders between Syria and Iraq, especially west of the Euphrates. Militants affiliated with the Iranian regime are often active in this business route to transport arms shipments to the militia's controlled areas under the guise of vegetable shipments. Nearly 15,000 Tehran-backed fighters are in the region. The west of the Euphrates River in Deir Ezzur province bordering with Iraq is the main area of influence of Tehran and its loyal militias in Syria, including the Iraqi militias. Pro-Islamic Republic militias stay on the outskirts of Deir Ezzur on the west of the Euphrates. According to the source, there are about 15,000 Iraqi, Afghan and Pakistani militias loyal to the Islamic Republic in Deir Ezzur, especially in the area between the border towns of al Bukamal and Deir Ezzur to al Mayadeen. In addition, thousands of fighters and military advisors of the Revolutionary Guards are in Syria, but Tehran only acknowledges the presence of advisors who assist the Syrian regime forces. The forces of Islamic Republic regime and its militias have established military bases and barracks since they were deployed to the Deir Ezzur area. Over the years, airstrikes have targeted trucks carrying weapons, ammunition, as well as slums and the militants' bases, especially in the area between Al Mayadeen and Al Bukamal. The Islamic judiciary official in Iran on Friday announced that 15 Iranian convicted offenders have been exchanged with six Turkish offenders between two countries, Iran and Turkey. The official did not mention the names and details of the Iranian convicted offenders and the data of their extradition. Turkey, however, hosts a large number of Iranian immigrants, investors and refugees since years ago. But the relations between Turkey and the Islamic Republic in recent years have made the country a relatively insecure haven for Iranians, who fled their homeland because of the persecution of tyrants. In the past years, several Iranians, including asylum seekers, who claimed that their life would be in danger if returned back to Iran, were deported to Iran. Three of them were sentenced to death over anti-regime protests last year after returning to Iran but Tehran halted the executions. On March 9th, the Islamic official said that Turkey has handed over an influencer and popular Iranian social media figure, Ilad Hatami, allegedly accused by Tehran of money laundering and fraud in connections with online gambling. Monarchist Khaled Pirzadeh went again on hunger strike to protest his inability to get urgent treatment and medical release. Anti-death penalty activist Athena Daimi was violently handcuffed and ankle cuffed and sent to exile from Tehran notorious Evan prison to Lakhan prison in Rasht on Tuesday, March 16th. 90% of Iranians struggle to buy essential food items like meat, chicken and fish. Food prices in Iran are on the rise, says an official. Iranian jailed monarchist Kurosh Bayati has come out in support of the campaign No to the Islamic Republic. He currently serves his six years and six month prison term for vague charges of insulting the supreme leader and propaganda against IRI. Famous Iranian singer Shahrokh Shahid joined the campaign dubbed No to the Islamic Republic. A captured video sent by Iranian citizens shows a tract on wall written in Farsi, No to the Islamic Republic. He also shouts that we want Shah, not Mullah. God damn you, Ruhollah. Videos have gone viral on social networks indicate Iranians inside the country use sticky labels to show their outrage at tyrants. Written in Farsi, No to the Islamic Republic. The Islamic Republic is not my choice. This is how people show their interest in Pahlavi dynasty. Graffiti on walls in the country indicates that the people want their exiled crown prince Reza Pahlavi to return to Iran. Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, also known as HOHR, says an IRGC commander was killed in Deir Ezzur where ISIS operates.